For those of you who do not know, Microsoft is working on Windows 7. This is the successor to Windows Vista. Uh, the uh, the uh, word is that it's supposed to be out sometime in early 2010, and that we are supposed to get some more information on it, um, particularly the first beta, as soon as 2009 arrives. Windows 7 is going to undergo some major changes, uh, most of them being under the hood. Um, I'm going to pull up this website here that I found on Windows 7, the interface particularly. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to read the whole thing because that's going to take too long, uh, but I will highlight some major points. Um, one of the biggest things is that this is going to be the biggest change to Windows ever since Windows 95, but it will not uh, it will not contain the anything like the um, the architectural modifications of Vista. Um, and also, if you have Vista, you'll be able to transfer to Seven without having to worry about your applications being faulty. Um, essentially, what they're going to be working on with Windows Seven. They're going to be working on the user experience. Now, this is obviously something that Apple and uh, the team at, at, at Apple have done for a long, long time, and depending on your distribution, Linux as well. Uh, Microsoft has finally decided to make the user the first and foremost item in their uh, operating system redesign. Um, and among other things, the way they're going to be doing that is they're going to be making a brand new taskbar. Um, and I'm going to read this a little bit. The te text descriptions are, on the buttons are gone in favor of big icons. The, icon can, the icons can finally be rearranged. No longer will restarting an application pull all of your taskbar, put all of your taskbar icons in the wrong order. The navigation between windows is now two level. Mousing over an icon shows a set of windows and th of window thumbnails, and clicking in the thumbnail switches windows. Now, um, I think that's going to be um, rather nice because in this picture here, and again, you can take a look at the website for yourself, we've got multiple tabs up in Internet Explorer. We've got three of them. We've got well, Live Search, we've got MSN, and we've got uh, just the general Windows website. And what you can do is, um, I'm guessing from the look of this, you can hover above the icon, which is going to be your Internet Explorer icon in this case, and you're going to be able to select what tab you want to go to. And I think that's rather convenient. Uh, kudos to Microsoft for implementing this. I think that, they are, they, that um, this is the right way to go. And right-clicking on the uh, icons shows a new user interface device that Microsoft calls the Jump List. And for those of you who are Macintosh users, the jump list is already familiar to you. Take for example iTunes. You have controls that allow you to manipulate iTunes. Forward track, back track, uh, rewind, fast forward, select your playlist and all that. Well the same thing is happening here. For example in Windows Media Player we've got frequent uh, places you visited. In Media Player you've got all music on the go, alternative, uh, recent uh, songs, you've got uh, Smooth, Party, Electronica, you've got Tasks, uh, such as Resume Last Playlist and Play All Music, and you can unpin the program from the taskbar and simply close the window. So this window is no longer going to remain, uh, from the looks of it, this closed window thing is no longer going to, hints that it's no longer going to be uh, there as long as you hold down the button. It's going to stay there until you hit that close button, and I think that's, that's rather nice. Uh, what else? And as I said, it says here that uh, jump lists provide quick access to application features. There's also going to be some changes in the user account control. Um, let's see. And the way that's going to be done is you're going to be able to manipulate more deeply within the user account control and you're going to be able to determine whether or not you get all warnings, some warnings, or no warnings and it's I, I think it's nice the way they've done that. Um, 
Let's see, anything else? There's some... I don't think this is on the website, but I've heard that the taskbar can be withdrawn and can pop up whenever you need it. No longer do you have to go into the control panel to hide your taskbar. You can, in effect, go in to a button on the taskbar and we'll be able to um, withdraw it and, and, and ask it to come back whenever you choose. Now, the way it disappears seems to be reminiscent of uh, KDE and XFace distributions for Linux. Um, so I think maybe they took a hint from that. Uh, eMeek77 seems to think that they're copying Apple again. At this point, I don't care. As long as Windows 7 is working, because the major that I'm in, Special Ed, uh, the bulk of the technology that we use in my specific area which is teaching students with visual conditions. Um, that's what I'm majoring in. We use Windows, and I need Windows. And I do not want to go to Vista because of all the major problems. I will, however, make the jump to 7 if Microsoft can prove that they are worthy, that they are, that they are hard at work on something that actually works. Um, and also if JAWS can smoothly make the transition to 7, um, without any problems because I put JAWS on Vista when it, when they said it was going to be ready and it caused my computer to crash to the point of having to be rebooted but that's a different story altogether so yeah Windows 7 um, it looks like there it's gonna be good um, this is actually one of the Windows releases that I'm excited about for good reason but I'm gonna wait until I can get some information on it uh, because I no longer am entitled to any free upgrades uh, like I was with Vista, and I'm not going to make the same mistake again, like I did with Vista. If anybody's wondering about that, all I did was install Vista, and after about a month, the whole thing crashed, um, and I had to re-image re the entire machine back to XP, and I was told that I should stay away from Vista. Uh, this was pre-Service Pack 1. In order to get to Service Pack 1, I would have to reinstall Vista, and then get Service Pack 1, and I was told that it would be a little bit difficult for me to do. I'm not sure why exactly. I seem to recall something about when Service Pack 1 first came out that the upgrade from pre-Service Pack 1 Vista was not very uh, smooth. But that's besides the point. I'm skipping Vista, and I'm hoping to make the jump to 7 with a lot more success. What is your take on Windows 7? Is it going to be worth it? Do you think Microsoft really have something this time? Uh, give me your input on it. And like I said, if anybody's wonder, if anybody thinks you know, Windows is copying Linux or Windows is copying Mac, I don't care anymore. As long as it works and as long as it gets the job done, that's all I care about. Um, because, like I said, I'll need it for work in the future because of my major. Um, so that's pretty much it. Questions and comments are welcome. If you have any questions about my glasses, please watch the video, No Glasses Equals How Much Vision. Uh, no bashing on me, please. Just keep the videos, keep the um, comments related to the videos. Uh, topic. Um, oh, and I got a comment asking why don't I review something that is non-tech related from time to time. And I will tell you this. Next week, Enya's new album is going to be out. And I'm thinking about picking it up. It's called and Winter Came. You can get some more information about that on our website, on her website, as well as listen to uh, and actually watch the video for Trains and Winter Rains. It's also here on YouTube. I don't know how it managed to get up there, but it did. Um, give that a watch and see what you think, and uh, when I get a copy of the album, I will be reviewing it. And may uh, drift off into music as well for reviewing. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it. Comments and questions return regarding Windows 7 are welcome. Thank you for watching, and have a nice evening.